Hi, I'm Sarah Tonin, and this is my Arcane Mage Guide for Patch 3.3. This is just going over the basics of being an Arcane Mage. I hope you enjoy. Alright, the first thing that we need to talk about with ma Arcane Mages is the Talent Tree. I mean, this is what makes you an Arcane Mage for Patch 3.3. The major difference between this tree and the trees before is that we no longer need arcane barrage. If you'll notice in this tree and in mine, I don't even take it. I, it's okay, Granny. You know, it's one point. So if you want to take it, it could be nice. But you can take that one point and you can put it somewhere better. Uh, especially for the Lich King fight, if you get slow, if you take the point from arcane barrage and put it in slow, that could be handy for the Valkyrs but otherwise it really doesn't serve a purpose. The other major difference between this tree and mine is I actually will get frost warding, which does help for Cindergrosa and Marogar and any fight where you can absorb fire or frost damage since you have that board. The other major difference is that if you'll notice in my tree I do not get the missile pushback, which is in the first tier the third one over. I do not get it because for the most part you really don't encounter too many fights in ICC where pushback is an issue. I mean, you really and truly don't. So I would not worry about that. Aside from where you decide to allocate your talent points, you also need to pick up three glyphs. Well, obviously. The first one is Glyph of Arcane Missiles, Glyph of Molten Armor, and then Glyph of Arcane Blast. Those are the three that you have to have. Now, minor glyphs, it depends upon what you want. I personally just get Slow Fall and Glyph of the Penguin because I love my penguin. But otherwise, it's up to you what minor glyphs to get. Alright, now to go over your stats. The most important one is Hit. Once you get to approximately 290, uh, which is 11%. It depends upon your faction. If you're Alliance, you'll need less. If you're Horde, you will need the 290, but otherwise that's as much hit as you need. If you have more than that, you're wasting DPS. Your next stat is Spell Power, then Haste, and then Crit. Crit is the last thing you need to worry about. It's all Spell Power and Haste that you need to. Uh, depending upon how much Haste you have, then you can you know, start putting in Crit, f but for the most part, it's Spell Power and Haste after you get hit capped. Alright, I'm just going to briefly touch on gems and enchants. Your gems are up here, you do not deviate from this. You're an arcane mage, you don't need a gem for hit or anything. So you need the Ruin, Cardinal Ruby, Reckless Amatrine, Purified Dreadstone, and the Chaotic Skyflare Diamond. Those are your only ones. Don't worry about anything else. Alright, I've included all the enchants that you need for your gear, including what mats you need or how much gold you need to spend. However, there is one item that has some um, argument to it, your weapon. If you have a staff, there's a bit of an argument as to whether you need spell power or haste. I mean, really and truly, it depends upon your gear. There's no real way of saying, oh, well, you know, you should get spell power because this would be better because you have to have a balancing act between haste and spell power. It's, it's a little tricky. So I have included the RAR uh, website, which is really, really good. It's it's an interesting program. You There is a little bit of a learning curve, but once you understand what's going on, it's totally simple. Uh, for the most part, you need to like check off every single thing that could be an upgrade for you, and then it finds out exactly what you need and how to gear it and stuff. So it's really nice in that way. As for add-ons, I've just listed the ones that I think are the most important for a mage. The first one is mixed scrolling battle text. It is so, so nice for letting you know exactly when one of your abilities is up, like Missile Barrage. It's so nice because you can have it make a sound and then you'll know exactly when you can pop it. Uh, the next one is Quartz. It handles quite a few things, but mostly it's just your cast bar. It'll show your, you your latency and when exactly you can um, click your next spell, so that way you get the most DPS. Recount is, well, you don't necessarily have to have it. It's just handy to tell exactly how you're doing with your DPS and how it compared to everybody else. <laughs> The next one is Omen. It's very important because if you pull from a tank, bad things happen. 
I know this. So, so it's a good thing. Decursive, it's very nice. You really don't have too many fights in ICC that you actually need it. Um, Death Whisper is one of them that you need to take out the Curse of Torpor or however you say it. You also need uh, deadly boss mods or big wigs. I mean, this is a given for anybody. Sexy cooldown is really nice because it'll let you know exactly when all of your abilities are up, like your mirror images or icy veins. It'll tell you exactly when that is going to be up. And the last mod is Grid. You don't necessarily have to get this. It is optional. I know for some people there it'll screw up your interface, but for me, I really, really like it. It's especially helpful for summoning people, <laughs> but it also lets you know who's dead, what's going on, and it's, it's especially helpful for that. All right, we've covered the basics. It's now time to get down to rotation. We basically push two buttons. That's it. Okay, okay, granted, you know, we might push four, but for the most part, you're only really going to be pushing two major buttons the whole fight, which is so boring, and I hate it, but whatever. But anyways, there is one major factor into what your rotation will be, and that is if you have the two-piece tier 10 bonus. Did I say that right? Two-piece tier 10 bonus. Yes! What this bonus does is as soon as you hit your missile missile barrage, which you'll notice I just got it, it, it looks like the little guy with the white background, that is pushing the limit. That increases your haste. And if you do not have this, which I, I have to ask, why don't you have your two-piece tier 10 bonus? Because, yeah... The math just doesn't add up that you don't have it yet, unless, of course, you're just selling your Serenite on the auction house and not using it to buy gear. But anyways, that's that's beside the point. Anyways, if you do not have the two beast bonus, your rotation will be Arcane Blast times four Missile Barrage, which means that you will not use Missile Barrage until you have four stacks of Arcane Blast. Enough said. However, if you do have the two-piece bonus, you will do AB, 2, 3, 4, MB. Basically, what this means is you will cast Arcane Blast, and as soon as you have two stacks, if you have Missile Barrage up, you can cast it. No problems. So, it, it's a little bit easier than the 4 one, because you don't have to worry about keeping up the stack as much. So... Yeah, that's uh, the arcane rotation. There really is nothing much else to it. It's it's not face rolling. It's just pushing the one button over and over and over and over again, or whichever button you have, arcane blast, um, key two. So yeah, that's it. Um, let's see here. What else is there to talk about arcane mages? Also, we do not have as good of AOE as fire mages do because they have living bomb. But personally, I am too lazy to respec just for trash and then have to get my mana back because you never know when you're going to have to use your um, evocation which that's another topic that we need to discuss something extremely important to remember is that if you're oom um, you can do nothing you just sit there and want the boss which is not what you want to do so for the most part don't try to just fish for the missile barrage proc because you're going to go out of mana like nothing. Like, okay, granted, you know, if you're a full mana, go ahead because I know I do it. But you want to watch your mana. That is the most difficult thing about being an arcane mage is mana. You have your mana gem and your evocation. Generally, you want to pop your evocation during an icy veins or a bloodlust or heroisms to get it over with as quickly as possible. But um, generally, if you have any mana left at the end of a fight, you didn't do enough. However, if you're oom um, before the fight ends, well, you didn't manage your mana well enough. So it's it's uh, it's a tricky thing. Also, your CDs. When do you use them? That's another question that I get. Um, generally, if you have 1.2k haste, pop your IV after bloodless or heroism if you have less than that pop it during um, you want to reach this soft cap for haste but you don't want to go over it so it, it's a tricky thing and I'm certain people will disagree with me on this but this is generally what I've noticed 
And that was my Arcane Mage Guide. I hope that helped you a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to message me, and I'll see you in the rest of my videos. Take care!